Hey guys, how are we doing? I'm MTF Print, and today I wanted to show you just a super easy hinge design that I found. I've already implemented it into a couple of designs over the weekend, and it's worked out pretty good for me. So it's super easy. You don't need to like do weird math and use a barrel. It's literally just a circle, an extrusion, a chamfer, and a cut. So let's get into it. To start off, I already made the design of the hinge, so you can just copy my dimensions, use just lines and dimension it out. Uh, this 0.2 millimeter gap here on all three of these sides is your tolerance. So whatever your printer's tolerance is, whether that be 2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, if you really need to fix something, that's what that number is going to be. And it's going to be that same thing with the actual distance in the nub, but we'll get to that. So after you have your sketch all done, fine, looking pretty, you just finish your sketch. We'll press E to extrude. We want to extrude both of these sketches and we'll go up 10 millimeters. And don't mind the body number here. I've tried to record this video about three times and each time my microphone just didn't work. So we want our hingy part of our body. Uh, I'm not sure what hinge terminology is, but it's just I'll just refer to this as the actual hinge and I'll just refer to this as block. So with the hinge, what we want to do is we want to make a circle. That's going to be our nub that we eventually make into a chamfered kind of slanted nub. We can make it on the inside, but I find that to be a little bit difficult because if you look at it from the front view, it's going to get blocked. So I'll just do it on the outside. Create sketch, go on your outside plane, and we immediately want to project this corner. So create, project, corner. You can see we get a purple line there for our projected corner. Press OK. And now we want to make sure that our circle is centered on our X axes. So we can press L for line. X for construction, so that way it doesn't count it as an actual tangible line. Go to our leftmost side, and we want to go until we see that triangle. That means you're dead center in whatever line you're looking at. That's your midpoint. Click, drag it all the way across. From there, we want to uncheck construction, and we want to make our circle. Now, your circle does not have to be dead center, depending on how you do this and your math. If you want these two to line up, uh, when your hinge is completely folded, if you have another one over here, you want your circle center to be, the distance from the wall is gonna be half of the total height of your extrusion in the beginning. That's the best way I have to explain it because that's the best way I have to do it. That also depends on where your holes are relative to your hinge. It's gonna be a lot of trial and error on your part. I just want to show you how to actually make it because it's easy. So you press C for your circle. We're going to make our circle five millimeters. And since our hinge is 10 millimeters tall, we're going to make it five millimeters from the wall. So we press D for dimension, center of our circle, press the side of our wall, hit five millimeters. There we go. It's looking a beautiful so far. Finish your sketch. And now we're a good bit ways done, actually. So what we're going to do is we need to project this, not project, we need to extrude this sketch pretty much off of both of these walls. But we're going to start with this wall first. So we're going to highlight our sketch, press E to extrude. Our start is going to be the object, and it's going to be this wall. And see our arrow is pointing into the object. We don't want to use positive if it's pointing in because that will cut so we'll go negative and we'll just go two millimeters since i know that works make sure operation is join and it gives us a nub see the nub i was talking about a couple minutes ago that's the nub it's a prophecy from here we want to chamfer the nub because it's going to print flat like this you don't want this to be completely flat because you'll need supports and that will mess everything up. We want this to be completely print in place. So we're gonna give it a slope. So we're gonna select our corners, or I guess edge, there's no corner. 
modify, chamfer. Now, depending on how big the circle is, how long the circle is, this chamfer is going to depend on a bunch of stuff and you just need to play around with it until you're happy. But our end goal is to get flush with the wall, just completely flush with the wall. We do not want any overhangs like this. We do not want any flat spot. Flat spot up here in the front, that's fine. Flat spot up here at the back, not fine. Get it completely flush. And that's done. Now we just need to do it again on this side. And you can mirror it. You can do a bunch of weird math. You can try a bunch of different stuff. I found with this is so easy, I just do it again. E for extrude. Object. 2 mil. Get your edge. Chamfer. We already know it's 2 mil. There we go. Uh, and if you wanted to, if you didn't want to edit these in case you had to go back, you can always make that a parameter. I don't need to right now since I know it works. All right, we're looking good. Now, here comes the neat part, the part that I didn't know about, and I'm going to use this forever. We need to cut these two nubs into this block. And how we're going to do that is we're actually going to use the combine tool. I didn't know we could do this. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit combine, or you can go to modify combine if you want to use the drop down. And you're going to select your target body as your block. You're going to select your tool body as your hinge. Under operation, you're going to go to cut, and that's going to cut out the entirety of the hinge, including out of the block. You can see the nubs there. But then that's going to get rid of our hinge. So if you hit keep tools, it won't get rid of your hinge. Now you just press OK. And you'll see we still have everything. But it cut our nubs out. Now as it stands, these nubs and these nubs are dead nuts on top of each other. We do not want them to be dead nuts on top of each other. We need to give them clearance. So that way you can print it. So the way we're going to do that, super easy. So we've done circle, we've done extrude, we've done chamfer, we've done cut. Now we just have to do clearance. All you're going to do, select your face on the inside of that curve. Select the flat spot at the very end. Do the exact same on this side. And you're going to press Q. And what that's going to do is it's going to offset your face by whatever you want your tolerance to be. Now, keep in mind, when you offset it, this is a circle. So it's going to offset your tolerance in a circle. So it's going to be twice whatever you put. So if your tolerance is, let's say, mine's 0.2, I need to put 0.1. So we're going to go negative 0.1 to cut, and you'll see it got ever so slightly bigger. So if we put that as zero, you'll see it got smaller, negative 0.1, it got bigger. And that's gonna give us our clearance. So if your clearance is, you know, 0.7, because again, you really should fix your printer, you can put 0.35 and it'll come out fine. And now if we go to inspect section analysis, go to top, you'll see we have so much clearance right there. And you can see our hinge being printed diagonally. No supports, no nothing. Perfect. Now we've created a rotatable hinge, but unfortunately, because these are squares, they will run into each other. So we're going to have to chamfer pretty much every corner you see to make sure that they don't. So the first thing you want to do is this, grab both of these inside and outside uh, ledges, corners, inside, outside. 
edges. That's the word I'm looking for. Then you want to grab these two edges and these two edges if you plan on having these side by side. Same thing, modify chamfer. And again, this will be trial and error. You can test it out in Fusion. You can test it out with test parts. Uh, I'm just going to go 4.5 just because I know that's going to work. And it's going to create something like that. And you're done. This is this is completely done. You can take a look at it from that side. Take a look at it from this side. As long as nothing is interrupting your hole, you're fine. Now, if you want to make sure that these parts can rotate just fine, you can click on your two bodies. You can inspect interference and hit compute. No interference detected. If uh, any of your faces were touching each other, it would tell you there's interference. And yeah, this is just a super simple hinge design. It took a lot longer to describe it than it will take you to make it. And you can do this in anything. I used it to make a foldable plate holder this weekend. Super easy, super simple. If you wanted to make a double hinge, you just mirror uh, your hinge here. You just mirror your block, mirror your hinge, and then just make sure there's a gap between this wall and the wall next to it. You'd be perfectly fine. So yeah, that's it. Super easy stuff and a lot of fun to learn and definitely, definitely useful. So I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, share it with your friends, throw comments, tell me how great I am. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging out.